from New York, assembled in Mexico, it's The Late Show with David Letterman. Tonight, John Travolta, singer Barry Manilow, and author Meryl Marco. Plus, Paul Schaefer and the CBS Orchestra. And now, exiled Haitian president, David Letterman. That's very nice of you folks, very generous of you. Welcome to the program, my name is Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you something, we got us a blockbuster show here tonight. Oh my goodness, you know about this uh, new movie, Pulp Fiction? Have you heard about Pulp Fiction? In the first act, it features an inflatable doorman. No, it... One of the stars of Pulp Fiction, John Travolta. Squealing! A woman actually squealing with delight. I heard her. Also on the uh, program tonight, a musical legend, Barry Manilow. Is. <laughs> and, 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 to say the least, an old friend of mine, a very funny woman, and a fine author in her own right, Meryl Marco is on the program. <laughs> And right over there in the front row, at the end of the front row, we have a woman with a busted fibia. Right over there, can we get a, let me, there, where is it? Yeah! <laughs> you know, the bad thing is she busted it in the lobby of this theater. and We're, we're trying to kiss up her to, to her tonight to talk her out of suing. Now! If you can, kids, do me a big favor. Say hello to our good friend Paul Shaver. He's standing right over there. Hey! Jack, how are you? Good. Nice to see you. Thank you very much, Paul. How, how was your weekend? Did you have a oh, nice weekend? Oh, it was a beautiful weekend. Now, let me ask you a question. There's no reason you should be, but are you a little nervous about tonight's program? I, I can feel the tension in the air. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. Why is that? Well, because of uh, Meryl. Meryl Marco. Meryl Marco, who uh, she and I, uh, yes. I don't even know the word. How do you, what are the, what are, what are the words I'm looking for here? <laughs> We were an item at one yeah, time. Yeah, we were. Yeah, we were. She was uh, in, uh, then together like that. The two of you were. Well, not exactly like this, but you know. <laughs> the, the two of you were involved. That's right. And, and, and worked together also for a long time. And she long was time. the head writer that, that's right. on this Th show. Thank you very much. Uh, do I need an interpreter? And anyway. <laughs> I thought you might. Uh, so I haven't seen this woman in quite some time. Yeah. And uh, tonight will be the first time I've seen her in quite some time. Did I mention that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as, as a result... As a result, it's, I'm a, it's a, uh, you know, makes Understand. me just a little, and, and it's good sure. to hear that you're a little that way yourself. Of course. Uh, and and uh, John Travolta, and of course, uh, Barry Manilow. And you know, <laughs> come to think of it, I haven't seen Barry Manilow in quite some See, time I, either. I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Play that. Now you're right, I know. You don't know 
You don't know what you're doing, yeah, right? And I was talking to Barry Manilow. In addition, he's on a tour right now. In addition to playing with all of those musicians, by the way, who's paying for those tonight? <laughs> Your tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. in, in addition to traveling with that huge band, he's also doing a few select dates with the actual Hoots of Joy. No kidding, the oral <laughs> gospel. <laughs> That's right. The actual hoots of joy. <laughs> the actual hoots of joy. Fabulous. Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest and I shared a very long relationship during which uh, she helped create the first version of this very television show right here. Uh, tonight she is here with a brand new book she has written. It's very entertaining, entitled How to Be Hap, Hap, Happy Like Me. <laughs> it's, it's more than a pleasure to welcome Meryl Marco. Meryl! You look terrific. Do you have a show or something? Now, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of a show. Yeah, well, kind of not tonight so much, but other nights we have a show here. You know, I'm, uh, I'm a little jumpy. I'm a little nervous. Really? Why would that be? Well, because I, I haven't seen you in a long, long time. That's so odd because ordinarily you're so rarely jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> we're like Usually a, a zen state of calm we're, around we're you. We're like a minute into the round and she's tagged me already. <laughs> Um, I'm very happy you're here. Well, thank you. You know, uh, let's just mention, we mentioned that you were responsible to help uh, create uh, the, the old shows at, at NBC. But I have many of the old shows at NBC, Lucy. <laughs> oh, is that right? You know, I had no idea. All our old favorites, Life of Riley. <laughs> but in addition to creating those shows specifically, you're responsible for Stupid Pet Tricks. That's right. Now, is that something you're still proud of today? <laughs> Well, I have very many stupid pets on my own yeah. today. And, uh, and also stupid human tricks. That's right. And many of the things that we still do today, you are directly responsible mm -hmm. for. I was responsible for you doing uh. this. <laughs> I came up with this. Is that mine? Is that right? Yeah. yeah, it works out pretty well for me. Yeah. Um, I know, I know, this one was mine. <laughs> I know you have a, a picture of us. Do you want to show that now? I do. I brought a picture of us because I thought people would like a little glimpse into uh, when we were a happy couple. All right. Yeah, this was a picture of the happy couple that I found. All right, let's show it right over here. Hard to believe there'd be any problems with a couple like this. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the occasion for that? Uh, uh, I actually do remember the occasion, but it doesn't have an amusing anecdote oh. attached to it. Well, all right, <laughs> then let's just keep moving. <laughs> So you're traveling the country with a book. By the way, I, I'm reading the book. Traveling the country is what I'm doing. Traveling right? the country, promoting your book, and I'm, I'm reading the book, and there's some wonderful stuff in here. Thank you. You, you must be very proud of this. I must be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, suddenly it's like old times. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, by the way, I brought this for you. It came to the house. What is that? Some, oh, some mail. Yeah, I don't know if it's important. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, fine. I'll take care of that. <laughs> Uh, so when you go out on tour now, what kind of things are people talking about? You have well, something Well, you know, yeah, I brought this. People, of course, hound me about you. Mm -hmm. They hound me about you. You they get want... tired of that? Oh, no, I never get tired of it. <laughs> 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 I love to talk about you, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway... Um... <laughs> What do you have there in the paper? Well, so I was on You're this... You're just as goofy as a loon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you loved about Yes, me. I know. Yes. So anyway... Ow. Um, so anyway, I was on this, this goofball show. I, I write a column for a magazine called Buzz, and they called me up and they asked me, would I go on some goofball cable show to mm -hmm. promote my column? Right. I wrote a column where I compared and contrasted the three O.J. Simpson quickie books which are all excellent, by the way. Read them all. Don't read just one. Read them all. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, I'm on this interview show, and I'm, I'm 
talking to some guy I can't see on some weird thing called America's Talking. I've never even heard of it. Right. I'm on for around two and a half, three minutes talking about O.J. Simpson, and then the guy says to me out of nowhere, so tell me about David Letterman. What's mm -hmm. he like? Is he funny all the time? <laughs> and I said, just like this, that's right, he's funny all the time, 24 <laughs> hours a day. It's unbelievable. He never <laughs> stops being funny. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, you know is true. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't help it. I can't turn it off. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so anyway, what do they do? So I th I'm thinking, this guy's going to be mad at me. I'm being such a smart ass. Mm -hmm. I really should watch it. And instead, this guy goes, oh, boy, a scoop, and he phones it into the post. <laughs> it's that parallel universe of stupid people. <laughs> well, now, I'll wait <laughs> so just he a phones minute it into the, Well, no, seriously. So he phones it into the post. This is the article that appears in the post the next day. No joke, Dave's a real-life barrel of laughs. <laughs> Under your picture, Mr. Funny. Yeah! <laughs> I'm Mr. Funny. And under my picture... <laughs> under my picture, ex-gal pal. <laughs> and then, in the article, he qu they quote me. Off camera, she revealed, Letterman is a barrel of laughs in real life. Quote, he's just incredibly funny. 24 hours a day, he never stops being funny. It's really incredible, day and night. Yeah. It's a gift. It's a blessing. Pretty good. That's a pretty now, good. You know, we we're uh, we got to do a commercial here, and we haven't even really talked about the contents of your book. No. So so hang around, stick right there. We'll see what we can do. We'll do a commercial, and we'll uh, come right back with uh, Mr. Funny and ex-gal pal. <laughs> come on back, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the book is entitled How to Be Hap, Hap, Happy Like Me. Oh, please buy it, won't you? It's, all, it's a tell-all book about Dave. It's got everything you ever wanted to know about Dave in this book. It's actually very, all very amusing. All the secrets amusing. I never would very, anywhere very, it's, it's that real kind of funny that actually makes you laugh when you read it. Congratulations, you did a great you. job. Now, you, you have a little something there. Quickly tell people what that removed. is. Well, my, I have a dog named Lewis who right. has a greeting disorder. He greets you and then he knocks you down and makes you bleed. <laughs> and he also eats everything in the house. And this was a, a gift. Someone brought him a lovely squeaking porcupine. And then the next day I had to have it removed from his intestine cost me eleven $1 hundred dollars. Oh my. This is what it was removed from his intestine. I think if you're gonna have something removed from your intestine you hope it looks like this, don't you? And then the fun begins. Yeah. Well my best to Lewis. Uh, good luck with the book and pl please come back and we'll talk more about the book. All right. It's great fun to see you again. Thank you very much, Merle. Uh, my thanks also to Barry Manilow and John Travolta. Tomorrow Bruce Willis, Boys to Men and Gary Marshall. Good night everybody. Worldwide Pants. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a big time television program for you tonight. Academy Award nominee, a fine actor, a nice man, Andy Garcia is joining us. Also, a, uh, a terrific writer, a very nice person, and a woman who played a rather important role in my life for many, many years. A fine author as well. The lovely, the talented, the gifted, you know or you love her, Meryl Marco is on the program as well. And, and, everything I said about Meryl also happens to coincidentally hold true for this guest, Tracy Chapman, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. <laughs> exactly. How are we doing on time? We have enough time? We have time, though. All right, here's what let's do. Damn it, let's do a show. Now, yeah. say hello to our good friend, Paul Schaefer. Good to have you with us. How are you? 
Look, I did it again. Look at there, right there. See? Beautiful. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> our next guest had a long relationship with uh, our show and uh, yours truly. But as... <laughs> not sure that's the kind of thing you want to applaud about. She has since been lucky enough to move on to greener pastures, and this is a copy now in paperback of her very, very funny book, How to Be Hap, Hap, Happy Like Me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Meryl Marco. Meryl! Cecilia, welcome back to the program. Boy, you look terrific. Well, thank you. So do you. How are things going for you? You know, never better. <laughs> well, no, you they find are. that funny, yeah. do you? Uh, let's talk a little bit about your life, your dogs. All I know right, you love then? dogs. Tell me about your dogs. Yes, well, of course, I have four dogs now. Four dogs? Two dogs when I knew you, four dogs now. That's right. You and I, we had uh, Bob and we had Stan. Yeah. Yeah. And now I have Lewis, Tex, Bo, and Winky. <laughs> Thank you. Lewis, Tex, Bo, and Winky. Right. I pretty much have reconciled myself to the fact that I live in a herd. I'm pretty much Jane Goodall. Mm -hmm. It's like a herd of animals goes thundering through the house, and then dog hair wads, the shies and shape of tumbleweeds, <laughs> go flowing through afterward. That's just life for me. But, you know, I realized there, there are four really funny guys, these guys. Mm -hmm. And I realized that one of the reasons we get along so well is they have a very specific moral code. Which is? Which is, well, I'm going to illustrate it for you with what I refer to as the cookie time incident. All right. Okay, so I get up every morning at 6 o'clock because 6.05 is, of course, cookie time. Cookie time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the dogs awaken you at 6. Right, because we've got to get to cookie time at 6.05. So at around 6.02, <laughs> they go out and they pretend to do something in the backyard so they can get right back in at 6.05 for cookie time. And I want to say right now that cookie time is incredibly well attended. Uh -huh. It's always 100% attended. Everybody's there. 100% attendance, all four dogs at cookie time every single morning. <laughs> Except this one particular morning when I had only 75% attendance at cookie time. Oh my God, one of them is missing. One of them is missing. Three dogs at cookie time, one dog nowhere to be seen. So this, of course, rung a bell with me, and I went looking out in the backyard, <laughs> and I found that my dog Tex was doing what you used to refer to as the doggy magnet in the pool. Uh -huh. He's clinging <laughs> to the side of the he pool. He had fallen into the Paralyzed pool. Paralyzed with fear. Right, he was drowning. Now, does Tex not uh, swim? Tex could swim, it just hadn't occurred to him to try. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bright dog, yeah. no. So he tumbles into the pool fell and now... Fell into the pool in his haste to get into cookie time. Yeah. Fell right into the pool <laughs> and was in fact drowning. <laughs> so uh, don't be worried because I ran right out there and I pulled him out and he shook off and in a second later he reported for cookie he time. He was back there for cookie time. Cookie time was Everything back. was fine. Everything was fine, except that it did of course occur to me that only seconds before, the other three had been outside and sure. had watched him fall into the pool Seen and start to drown, <laughs> right? And thought to themselves, gee, you know, this is really too bad. He's apparently losing his life. It's his last <laughs> moments on Earth. But you know, hey, it's cookie time! Let's get inside for cookies! Cookie time! And they went running in for cookie time. And, then, now, um, and that's the kind of moral code that exactly. means something to me. Sure. You know, make the most of every moment, all right? Maybe there's a death, maybe someone's drowning, maybe it's cookie time! <laughs> We had, uh, of course, uh, the record collection earlier, and yes, I, I think did. it went very well. Oh, first, I, 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 well, I guess we should get to the record collection. I wanted to tell you about my dog, Lewis, who has a greeting disorder. A, gre a greeting disorder? Yeah, well, right. if you were to come in, he's got a greeting disorder. When you come in the door, he greets you until you bleed is pretty much what he does. It's like a half an hour of greetings nonstop, and he doesn't feel you've been properly greeted until you've passed out and are bleeding. G clothing is shredded, and there is, in fact, blood. Right, and then he's now embellished that, and this is, by the way, limiting the amount of people who come visiting me at the house. He now oh, has you think that's back. what's doing it, eh? <laughs> oh, come on! I would like to say right now, before you rough me up oh, anymore, no. that you know, of course, I kept diaries. Oh! God bless you. Anything you need? Can I get you anything? <laughs> How's the car running? You want a tune-up? How about some wall-to-wall -wall carpeting? Can I send you that? Yeah. Well, I would like that, actually. Uh, I'll make good on that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Lewis has embellished the greeting disorder. For now, he, what he does is, so he greets you at the door, and then he runs into the living room, and he has sex with the couch. 
is what he, just to make, it, make you know, and I was thinking, you know, it, it strikes me as funny behavior because it's a dog, but like, what if it was a guy? It would be, you know, when you come to my house, I just want to warn you, my husband, Ed, is going to choke you <laughs> until you pass out, and then he's going to run into the living room and have sex with himself, but you know, it's just his way of saying hello. Ah! <laughs> now, you know... Uh, I've got a little photo here of uh, Lewis. Uh, uh, oh, okay, let's see the... See the uh, oh, my God, what, that's... That's Lewis having is... part of the greeting. That's lovely. This is Winky and, uh, uh -huh. and his companion, which you, is a you, shoe. You had this couch scotch guarded or anything? <laughs> this is Winky That's here. That's Winky. He's having uh, sex with a, shoe, a dog shaped shoe. What the hell is going on in this place? <laughs> <laughs> and what a whorehouse are you running anyway? <laughs> I'm snapping photos. <laughs> Oh, anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, hang on. We have to do a commercial, ladies oh, and gentlemen. No. We, yeah, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back, kids. <laughs> Our next guest is a multiple Grammy-winning artist whose distinctive voice and songwriting style have garnered both critical and commercial acclaim. Her latest CD, right here, is called New Beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the program, Tracy Chapman. Oh, Tracy! Thank you very much, Meryl. Thank Get you. Get off the merit. I'm coming home. Good night, everybody. Do you know where your pants are? Some people from out of town. We had a woman visiting from where was it, Paul? Sault Ste. Marie, Sault Ste. Marie Ontario, Ontario, or yeah. Marie Calendar, Ontario, yeah. or something. And I, and I don't mean to be uh, snippy about your town, but if your city, take a take a look. If your city don't look like that, let me just say one thing: it ain't happening. It, your town, and 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 they're, and they're applauding. They're applauding because they know their town ain't happening. By the way, you kids, uh, you could have also had dinner for two at the Patsy's. Lovely Italian restaurant here in uh, New York City, or as my mom says, Italian. Lovely Italian restaurant. <laughs> or you could have had uh, dinner for two at Sparks Steakhouse, and, and Thursday night, I believe, is hit night. <laughs> Isn't it? Isn't it hit yeah. night? Yeah, yeah so it would have been, a, been a good night to go to Sparks. Oh, yes, sir. It's rub out night. Oh, Thursday oh. night. Come early, stay late, enjoy the action. <laughs> Polly Shore is on the uh, program, a very funny uh, woman, uh, Marilyn Marco. Celine uh, Dion, uh, Meryl Marco and I, of course, uh, were uh, an item. We were an item. We were a thing. We were a happening we were, yes. thing for uh, like 10 years or something like that. Ten years. Yes, exactly. And she's here on the program with a, a very funny new book. And, uh, well, they're selling just that well. I can't even get a copy. <laughs> Thought I'd have a copy here to hold up, but they're selling just that well. I don't I have see. a copy. Oh, well. yeah. uh, Celine Dion is also on the program last <laughs> Of course, the uh, Grammys were held at Madison Square Garden. We sent our own Leonard Tepper down there to cover all of the activity. Here you go. Leonard, take it away, buddy. Are you the real father of Michael Jackson's baby? I, I gotta hope not. How does it feel to be the new lead singer of Van Halen? He doesn't pay me enough. <laughs> After the show, are you going to trash your hotel room? I don't know what you mean. Me neither. How does it feel to be the new lead singer of Van Halen? Uh, it feels good, you know. Uh, it feels like uh, jets of fire screaming out of my skull. Is Pat Boom nuts? <laughs> Who's Pat Boom? <laughs> Have you ever come down with a bad case of the Fugees? No. Is Pat Boom nuts? <laughs> Mrs. Clinton, Mrs. Clinton. You know what I liked best about that? Uh, it was so quiet. 
I caught up on my paperwork. Oh, I'm glad you did. I was able to get a uh, jump on my taxes. Good. Yeah, I appreciate Couple that. Here's the book Merrill's right book. there. The Merrill Marco book is called The Guide to Love, ladies and gentlemen. It's hit night here. <laughs> the audience has a contract out on me. <laughs> I'll be tossed out of a speeding limo. Oh, no. Our next guest is a uh, four-time Emmy Award winner and the author of this uh, very funny book right here we showed you earlier, entitled Meryl Marco's A Guide to Love. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Meryl Marco. Meryl, come on out. How do you do? the show here or something? Well, not tonight, no. <laughs> Tell me about the book, Guide to Love. Now, this, I believe, is uh, number three, your third book. No, it's my 30th book. You read <laughs> really? It? Yeah. 30th book? Yeah, I'm really cranking them out. It must be very exciting for you. Oh, it must be. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have been doing some celebrating. There was a particular celebration I wanted to share with uh -huh. you. Oh, please do. Uh, may I go ahead? Yes. All right, then. So uh, I went out to dinner with a couple of friends of mine in a beautiful restaurant in Brentwood. Sure. It was a lovely uh, deck, candlelight. We were having some champagne. Mm -hmm. And this friend of mine, Cynthia, started pontificating. And I remember her words exactly. She said, uh, I think you can look at life as either a sitcom or a soap opera. Mm. And having said that, she leaned back into an open candle and her hair caught on fire. <laughs> So sitcom or a See, soap opera. This is, this is the, first of all, I want to say that I smacked her hair out, so I was a hero. <laughs> hey, but on top her of, hair yeah, out. <laughs> but on top of that, uh, I learned an invaluable lesson. It yeah. doesn't have to be just a sitcom no. or a soap opera. It can be a combination of both at right. the same time. Exactly. Or a roadrunner cartoon sometimes, perhaps. <laughs> Very good point. How are, you, how are your uh, dogs? I know you're an animal lover. And you do you have, know uh, that? Yeah, I do know Where that. Where do you know that Well, from? it's right here on the flap of your entertaining oh, book. I mean. uh, uh, tell, tell the folks what kind of dogs you got. How many do you have? Uh, I have uh, four dogs. Four dogs. Four fine dogs. Mm -hmm. Lewis, Botex, and Winky. And, uh, <laughs> Lewis, Botex, and Winky. That's a uh -huh. very famous law firm. Didn't they remember, yeah, I was with them. In the OJ thing, they didn't they come in at the last minute for the yeah. appeal? Yeah. Yeah. Lewis, Botex, and Winky. They uh -huh. were great. They uh, were Alan good. Dershowitz squeezed them out at the last moment, but damn good. So uh, anyway, uh, as I told you before, uh, my dog Lewis has a greeting disorder, mm -hmm. which is that when you come in the door in my house, he, he really overgreets you. In fact, um, if he... <laughs> His, his credo is, uh, everyone is incredibly glad to see me. <laughs> In fact, if he had a hit song at the Grammys, it would be called, I'll Never Stop Saying Hello. <laughs> Very enthusiastic boy then, isn't he? Oh. Now we have a, a picture here. Uh, this well, is not Lewis. This no, is another this dog. No, this is because I had a, a, a pet psychic come to my house uh -huh. to try to inform me as to what the, why Lewis feels the need to so over-greet everyone. A pet psychic. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was like uh, Sir Redmond Hil Hillary on Mount Everest. Yeah, you know, right, she was sure. there, of I had course. to contact her. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, uh, I didn't learn anything about Lewis, but I learned that my smallest dog, Winky, is a healer. A healer? This is him. Very cute. <laughs> uh, the whole thing came as a surprise to me because the only thing I'd seen him be doing previously is he walks really slowly from one side of the house to the other, licking the floor. Ah! Which, of course, now I know is a form of healing the floor. <laughs> How long did the pet psychic stay there at the house? She's still there. Yeah. And, and, and gave readings for... I got for, her on retainer. Reading, She's never leaving. Readings for all the dogs? Uh, yes, that's right. Readings for all the yeah. dogs. The, uh, the guy I billed it to you. Was that a problem? I'm sorry? I billed it to you. Was that a problem? <laughs> no. Yeah. Why? Everyone does. Uh, <laughs> uh, guide to love. Very ambitious undertaking. Mm -hmm. Well, who better to talk about love than me? Yeah, well... Uh... Yeah, 
Uh, did you have a question? Yes. Did you... <laughs> what, what did you learn of the topic that heretofore you did not know? Oh, well, as you know, I know almost everything. But uh, Well, actually, I did learn uh, all sorts of odd things. Like, for instance, I learned that the difference between casual eye contact and flirtatious eye contact is a two-second differential that apparently flir to have eye contact register as flirting is uh, five seconds to make an emotional impact, which led me to wonder what's the difference between a flirtatious eye contact and a psych psychotic stare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the difference as far as my rule of thumb is if the person making the flirtatious eye contact also seems to have visible beads of perspiration accumulating anywhere on their skin, <laughs> maybe don't give them your phone number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and did you consult the experts the way you consulted the pet psychic? I, <laughs> I always consult the experts. You know, actually, I've always been particularly bad at flirting, I always felt, because you, as you know, my version of flirting is I sit really, really still and try not to spill anything on myself. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't always even work when I'm sitting no. still. Oh, yes. You may recall. Now, uh, uh, but you have a, there's a song uh, written, you mentioned the, the Grammys, but there is a song written about you. Did you write it? No, I had, n had nothing to do with it. Uh. Well, of course, I remember the many songs you wrote me. Uh -huh. Would you like to sing one now? You know, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. But oddly enough, that's not the song to which we... If you're going to be difficult, have a seat in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh... uh of course, that's not the song to which I was referring. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, I was referring, I sent away for a love song because um, apart from the beautiful, beautiful ballads that you wrote for me, did you want to sing one now? <laughs> apart from those... Is there uh, an empty chair in the house? <laughs> <laughs> apart from those beautiful ballads, I, uh, I didn't have any... I've never heard a love song with the name Merrill in it. Mm -hmm. And then I saw in a catalog that you could get, uh, buy a love song for $40, and, uh, and they would sing your name in it. So I sent oh, for a love song for myself. Great, yeah. mm -hmm. And we have it here? That's right, you do. All it's right. a very it's a very beautiful song. You might want to get some Kleenex. All right. Are we going to listen to We're it gonna now? We're going to listen to just a okay. very small amount of it, and then I'm going to explain a little something okay, to you. Okay, here we go. Merrill is the name of the That's song. That's right. Why right. can see you always be the only one I love. Now stop it for just one second. Yeah. Okay. Now, what I liked about this when I sent away for it was that I realized that some guy was going to have to get fully dressed in a suit and drive across town and have to sing my name into the record a couple of times. Actually, you get three Merrills for 40. <laughs> and, uh, That's about what I used to pay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> now, I thought... <laughs> we're, just, we're kids trying to have fun. That's right, and that's why I brought this. <laughs> no. You know, I thought there might, there might be a moment where I might need something like this, and um, I just was wondering if Tuesday, August 30th, 1983 means anything to you. Tuesday, August 30th, 1983. Uh-huh. It's a page from my diary. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. Did you want me to read a little something from It's it? entirely up to you. I'll just leave this here, and then we'll just see how things go for the rest of the segment. I'll just have it right. Thank you. Now, would you like to hear my love song? Yes. Three Merrills for 40. <laughs> All right, so this, I mean, going back to my love song, uh, so I knew this guy was going to have to get dressed. He's going to have to drive across town, and I figured he, every day he says to himself, all right, who am I singing to today? Blanche, Beverly, Eddie, you know, whoever he's singing to. And then, and then though I think something, I don't know if he learned something, a little something about me, or if he saw me on TV or something, or I don't really know what happened, but I think you can tell by the way he sings my name, I think he, I think he fell in love with me. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that, what a lovely surprise. Yeah, I was... I, I didn't, I didn't mean... <laughs> of 
Dave just got home, very upset. He feels the show is, what else, being canceled again. All right, that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. This is uh, Tuesday, August 30th, 1983. Do you want to you hear the rest of the song? Or? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thought we would listen to the. All right, so, so anyway, I think the guy fell for me, is all, and I think you can tell by the way he says my name. All right, here we go. Marco's Guide to Love. I hope it's a huge success for you. Nice to see you again. Thank you very much, Meryl. Meryl Marco, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Celine Dion. Question, uh, Paul, you were you were singing in English, is that correct? Sorry, yes. Yeah, and then, but and we also had English subtitles. Well, what was that about? I don't know. Why I'm did not they sure. do that? It's a special version for the UN. I have I no see. idea. <laughs> Our next guest is a uh, very, very, very funny woman, very talented woman. She co-hosts a uh, talk show on KBC in uh, Los Angeles, California. She also uh, wrote and helped create the old show back at NBC and has written uh, this book right here. It's Meryl Marco's Guide to Love. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. <laughs> Meryl Marco. Meryl, come on up. I must say you look very nice this evening. Thank you. I must say you look very nice yourself. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You like being in New York City? Oh, you know, I love being in New York City. It's exciting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, you know what is the thing I don't like about being in New York City? Mm. Well, you know, there's hardly anything not to like. What's not to like? <laughs> but uh, I don't really like being driven around by other people. And like cabs and that kind of thing? You got your cabs, you got your limos. In fact, you know what the guy who just drove me here said to me when I got into the no. car? He said, are you going to do a song tonight? <laughs> and I said, oh, I hope there's time. <laughs> Swear to God. He well, said I, you know, I'm sorry, but we've already had a song. Aww. So I don't want to break your oh, heart or no. the driver's heart. Maybe another time for the song. Hopefully. Uh, okay. But uh, actually, the reason I don't like being driven has to do with an incident that involved the two of us. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll refresh your imagination. Do you recall one time you and I, a long time ago, were driving, I believe it was in some kind of a taxi cab in Indiana. Mm -hmm. Right. And I always get uncomfortable when other people are driving me, so I feel I have to chat up the drivers. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that exactly? Maybe we should explore that just a little bit. It's some kind of an upstairs-downstairs feeling I have about equalizing things. Right. I don't want them to think that I think I'm better than them. Would you be are. more comfortable riding in the front seat? Uh, yeah, I would, actually. Would you be more comfortable riding on the hood? <laughs> no, I think that would be taking it too far. <laughs> anyway, in this particular instance, I was chatting up the driver, as I am wont to do, and I said to the guy, uh, did you grow up around here? Because I knew that you had grown up yeah. around there. Born and raised. Yeah. And so... Thank you, Mom. <laughs> now so... pick up the cans and get out. <laughs> Mom. Yeah. Isn't that nice? So, uh, uh, so I said, uh, did you grow up around here? And the guy said, yeah, actually I did. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, interesting. Where'd you go to high school? <clears throat> and the guy said, I didn't go to high school. Now, at this point, I've since learned this is a good point to stop talking. At that point, you were making faces at me. You were doing one of these. Let it go, let it go, Yeah. let it go. Right. We're just trying to get to the airport. Right. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. But I kept talking. <laughs> Boy, does that ring a bell. <laughs> <laughs> don't make me start no, with the diary no, cases don't want again. Any no, more I don't. That. I'm sorry. Right, I learned so, my uh, lesson. So I said to him, I. He said, uh, uh, I said, did you, uh, did you go, go to high school around here? And he said, I didn't go to high school. And I said, I thought you had to go to high school. And he said, not if you killed a man, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, don't have to, you can get your cab license. You don't have to go to high school, though. Homicide is nothing in Indiana. 
Uh, and then I recall that we wanted to walk to the airport. Yeah, after probably that. Yeah, so. We got out. Uh, 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 and how are things uh, going in Los Angeles? Because that really, in many ways, in, in certain respect, is the cultural epicenter of this country. Do you think it? so? Well, in many ways, yeah. not, not in every way, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, I find that probably the only difficulty with uh, living in Los Angeles is that the hipness things keep changing. Very you have to hip. stay Everything up. Is, yeah. you have to, it's very hard to, to catalog which things are happening when. Got to really be on top of things. I went out. I'll give you an incident of this. I went out to a uh, restaurant. That I'm co-hosting this talk radio show. KBC. Now. Right. Yep. And uh, I went out to this. I wanted to go to like the hippest place in Los Angeles with this guy I'm co-hosting the show right. with. We were going to have a little meeting. What, what's his name? You want to mention his name? His name is Joe Crummy. Joe Crummy. All right. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> And, uh, because I know if Joe were here, he would mention your name. Oh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so we went to this place, the Sky Bar, which Sky is Bar. like the hippest place. Where it's, is it? I've not heard, I've not heard of the Sky it's Bar. It's in one of those hotels, like the Mondrian mm -hmm. or something. So, in fact, it's so hip, like they've got Duran Duran on the door, wearing coats that are the same color as the floor. <laughs> and then they've got like a raised platform, sort of a pool situation. And I swear this is true. People are laying out at the pool, and there are guys who look like Millie Vanilli circulating among the people with misting bottles, moistening people. <laughs> I don't know if they're called moisteners, yeah, you guys, well, actually. Sure, why not? But the people are so used to this, they aren't even going, what the hell are you doing? They're just going, moisten me. Yeah. Just moisten me. So, uh, so the moisteners are circulating. And so this, my friend Joe and I go over to this table, and we sit down and have our little meeting, and uh, we order lunch. Now, you know, it's one thing after another with the condiments mm -hmm. in L.A. Right. You know, oh, oh, no, I didn't know that. Oh, well, you know, they're always upgrading the hipness level of the condiments. So, you know, it, the fresh ground pepper, is that oh, we've, all, we've had oh, that sure. forever. Because <laughs> yeah. pepper is our most valuable seasoning, and yeah. we can only have a teeny bit for each people. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that we got that, and then sometimes we've got the fresh ground salt in L.A., too, rock yeah. salt. Okay. Sea salt, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, actually big cubes of salt, and that thing mm. where you can like grind a, your own like salt. Like a big salt lick in the lobby, a big well, block of salt? <laughs> That'll be Woodland soon. Woodland creatures coming out of the hills. I'm hey, look surprised. at the bobcat. <laughs> um, all right, so you're there. So, uh, uh, and then also sometimes they put the big crystal granules on the table. So I'm used to this, all the condiments always the shifting, shifting, variety, ever yeah. shifting. So sitting in front of me on the table, a regular thing of salt, and then a miniature galvanized terrine of granules. Oh. So I think, wow, this is the hippest way ever to apply That's pepper. Right, sure. Oh, you think it's pepper then? Yeah, because, you know, salt and then a oh. terrine of granules. What sure. would it be? Makes sense. Salt pepper. and Absolutely. pepper. Mm -hmm. Right. So I take, I have my salad in front of me, and I take a handful of the granules, and I sprinkle it, sprinkle it on my salad. And then I'm eating, and I notice there's just a little sand in my food. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I came to realize it's sand for cigar night. <laughs> very, very <laughs> Very, very <laughs> and then I really wasn't, I was so embarrassed about the whole thing, I wasn't really able to acknowledge that no. I put a yeah. lot of sand on, so yeah. I wanted my partner to think I put just a teeny bit of sand on, <laughs> so I ate the salad! <laughs> I was sort of imagining myself, because I was grossing myself out by eating all this sand, yeah. I was thinking, maybe they ship it in from Bermuda each sure. day, where it's yeah. clean, a yeah. clean new shipment Nothing hipper than a mouthful of sand. I'll yeah. tell you what, we got to uh, do a commercial, we'll be right back here with uh, Meryl Marco. You look uh, happening. You look like Manhattan. You look like, you know, big time stuff here. Would today. you like to dance? <laughs> well, <laughs> I got that thing in my back, or oh. I would. Yeah. Um, now, uh, I understand uh, you brought a clip. Yeah, you know, it's always been one of my dreams to come on the show and have a clip, and sure. I never have a clip. Right. So I actually got a little acting part on uh, Mike Hammer. They're doing it in syndication now. Is that right? I didn't know that. And they, uh, they hired me to play a radio talk show host because I'm you working as a radio talk show host. Right? And I, have a, I get murdered. Really? Yes. So it's a death scene. I had to study a lot of Shakespeare to do this. Mm -hmm. But I think you'll be very impressed with my acting technique. All right. So in the scene, we're going to see you You're actually... going to actually see me get murdered. I, oh, I didn't even have that much rehearsal. <laughs> but you'll see how realistically I portray this. Right. This is have... real. This is a real clip. Did you have a mouthful of sand? <laughs> I probably this is did. me being silly. All right. And when will this be on? Do you enjoy when... donuts? <laughs> oh, God help me. I love the donuts. Oh, I thought you did. When will this be on? Uh, and sometime in May. I got them to pull this clip out, way out of sequence, okay, so I can bring a clip on. Meryl Marco, uh, Mike Hammer.
I need security. No, no, what you need is a muzzle. I'm pulling the plug on this place. Security! There's a crazy person in a hat! Nice show, Precious. something you picked up from me, I think. You know, one of the things I liked about doing that is it's the only chance I've had since third grade to make this noise. <laughs> I've heard you make that noise. <laughs> I believe you have. <laughs> Of course, uh, Meryl Marco's uh, Guide uh, to Love and uh, Valuable... I went to all these love seminars. Right. Go buy this book. It's all the advice you ever will need about love. All right. All right. Funny, entertaining, and useful. Yes, that's so true. Thanks for being here. Thank Happy you for New Year. Me. Meryl Marco, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Pretty good show so far. Nobody got hurt. Not so far. At least far. not now, anyway. Uh, my apologies to uh, Mitch Hedberg. Uh, he had to go out to dinner. Say? <laughs> <laughs> but, huh? <laughs> He'll be on. Went out to dinner. You went out to dinner. Not to. We'll have him back another night when, he, when he's not so hungry. My thanks also to Merrill Marco and Ethan Hawke. Uh, Monday, Tom Arnold, Steve Forbes. Oh, that guy running for president. Yeah, Remember that guy? That? Yeah. And uh, Jake Johansson. Have a great weekend. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Do you like plants? Thank you very much, Eddie. What a nice to see you. How are you doing? It's all part of being smooth. You're going to be on TV. You got to. You got to be smooth. Am I right, Paul? Smooth. And you are smooth. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for a little segment we call Stupid Pet Tricks. Here's how we play it. <laughs> By the way, in my hum humble opinion, Stupid Pet Tricks is the single best idea for a television show in the history of television. Don't you think? It's been very good to huh? us. Been, as you said earlier, it's been very good to us. Yeah, ex exactly. A segment that's been very, very, very good, good to us. To us. I, it, w it was not my idea. I can't take credit Who for came it. Up I with wish it? I could take credit for it because, ladies and gentlemen, in these three cards here, this is a million dollar idea right here. Stupid <laughs> Petrix. Stupid Petrix have kept us on the, year, on the air for nearly 20 years. Am I right, Paul? Absolutely yeah. correct. A a and uh, it was the idea of uh, one of our old uh, head writers on the old show, uh, a lovely woman by the name of Meryl Marco, and, and I think it's, a, it's about time uh, she gets credit for this wonderful million-dollar television idea. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And by the way, and by the way, I say this from my heart, hoping to avoid litigation. All right, here we go. <laughs> 